So in the last video, we got the is dead condition to actually be set thanks to the object blackboard setter. So if I hit play and uh, we shoot one of these enemies a few times, they should get to the point where in our condition leaf, the is dead condition being pulled from the blackboard is set to true. So if we look up here in the blackboard, we can see is alive is off, which means is dead, which is the value of not is alive is going to be true. And with a successful condition, that means we can continue on to the action, which is going to be to play the death animation. So you can probably tell that the monitor looks a little different here. So I did get a new monitor. And as a result, uh, I know that this is really, really tiny right now. So I'm going to scale up the game view in our level to have the camera um, have a bigger zoom. So we'll try five and maybe I'll have to bump that up to six. Actually, uh, yeah, five is pretty good. So that's the change I need to make just so that when you guys are seeing the video that it's still big enough on your screen to see what's going on. All right, so in our invader, uh, we have is dead being triggered. So now we need to create a play death script. Um, before that, I think I'm going to go into this and give the class name a condition at the end. So is dead doesn't really specify much because is dead could just be a Boolean. But we have a Boolean that's a condition that allows us to pass into the next script. So to be more specific, I'll rename that here for the node. I'll call it is dead condition. And I'll find is dead in the project by searching is dead. And I'll rename this to be is dead condition. Just keeping the naming consistent between those three areas. And now we should clearly be able to identify that this is a condition node that allows us to pass on to the uh, play death node. And then we'll want to create this script. Before that, I'll call this play death action uh, since it's an action leaf. Now let's right click on it and extend the script. We're extending from action leaf and we want play death action, which uh, actually can go in basically objects as well because uh, objects sometimes explode. So, so we'll put the play death action script inside of objects, create, and I'll give it the class name play death action. When once our is dead condition is met, we want to go on to play death action and run the tick function until the action is successful. So it won't initially be successful in a single frame. So there's also a continue that you can return from play death. Uh, but let's go ahead and grab the tick function. So if I check behave node, which is one of the roots from um, a action leaf, you can see that and the enums here you can return running when it hasn't failed or succeeded yet which is usually going to be what you actually do during an action and once it either fails or succeeds then you run that instead so that the behave tree can move on to other sequences in your ai logic so we want to implement the tick function and then we want to return one of these three messages depending on where our action is at so let's copy that into the play death action. Okay, also on the behave node, there is this function we can implement, which is before run. So before we start uh, basically fully activating the behave node, which in this case is the action leaf, we can have it execute some one time code. So I think that would be handy to actually implement. And this will be, I guess, where we play the there emit a signal from these actions and then respond to that in the object sprite we can reference the animated sprite inside of here and then to play it there directly. I think, I think for this character, I'll try going with a second, at least initially, and we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to do it at export var, and then let's say a sprite, and this will be a animated sprite 2D. And then before we run, we want to play the death animation. So sprite.play, and we need the name of the animation. So I also need to export var animation names. And I think we called it just animation names as well. So do animation names dot uh, death. So if you remember from before, that was just in the data folder. We had a resource called animation names, which holds all the consistent animation names for objects across our project that are going to be playing animations with the same name so that they all all, so that they all use the same name for their animations and it's kind of enforced here. Uh, so when we go to the play death action, we're going to play the death animation on the animated sprite 2D. 
So if I click on play death, I can assign the sprite, character sprite 2D, and then animation names. We quick load that from the project, and that's set up. So that handles that. And then we're going to wait for the animation to be finished. So sprite.animation finished, we can connect to that. And on animation finished. So let's see, down here, we'll need that function on animation finished. Okay, and let's pass that for a second. I'm going to click on the character sprite and check the nodes. So the animation finished signal doesn't have any parameters. Uh, so all we need to do here is set what kind of return we're going from the tick. So let's see, uh, var, I don't know, I could call it like tick result. And this will start at running. Also want to make sure that when we, before we run, we set this to running. We're always going to return the tick result. And then on animation finished, we're going to set the tick result to success. So what this code should basically do is play the death animation. It's going to keep running this leaf until the animation is finished. And when the on death animation is finished, it's going to return success from the tick result. So now we should be able to go to the debugger and see the behave tree a little better. So we have the death sequence. So is dead is failing because the characters are very much alive. So let's shoot them a bit and we'll see that is dead. It was triggered success. So if we continue that and we look at the behave tree, uh, then we can see for this character that the play death animation was running and it did play the play death animation. The reason that it didn't actually go to success is probably because it's a single frame animation. So it already finished. But if I shoot this guy over here, well, death animation triggered and again, but all of them are going to be saying running for uh, where we're at in the state. So as things are right now, it's just going to be kind of stuck there and we want it to finish. So if we go to the play death animation, uh, we're going to want to make sprite.play the last line here, I think. And as you can see, it's still stuck at running. So let's see if this on animation finished is ever even being set really. It's not. Okay, and the reason for that is that our animation is set to loop. So if we turn off the animation looping for our death animation on the invader character sprite, then we should be able to go back in. Well, okay, they, they're playing the wrong animation now. So we wanna make sure that this uh, walk animation is still the default. So I think we need that button right there, auto play on load, hit play. Okay, and now our characters are walking. If we shoot them, then we uh, do get the unanimation finished tick result. Okay, that's what we want. And if we check the behave tree on the first invader, well, we can see we're getting some glitches there. So let's see, signal on animation finished is already connected. Right, so we do need to make sure we disconnect the uh, signal here. So I will go ahead and do that so we don't get any errors. Uh, let's hit play one more time, shoot the guy a few times, and let's check the debugger. So we can see that it's still trying to go into is death condition success. And it seems like we don't actually want to return success because once we do that, it's going to come back into the start of the condition and keep checking that on every frame. So although we can use this um, connect for animation finished, we just always want to return running. So we actually can keep it a lot simpler. We just need to play the animation once, get rid of this bit, this bit, and that right there. And all we need to do is play the death animation, at least for now, and hit play. So if we watch the debugger on that, then now it's only gonna come in here once, or it should only come in here once. And to prove that, I'll put a breakpoint here for the before run. So you can see it's not calling before run over and over again, we're just repeatedly running the death state. And then here, okay, our sprite's gonna play the animation, but it only happens once and then from that point forward, it's just running tick. So if we needed to exit the tree here, we might actually need to check the blackboard to see if is alive was set to false so that it can fail out of this state and then continue on to the hit sequence. Well, we don't need that specific functionality for this game. So I'm not gonna do that condition to check and return failure here uh, because we're gonna say that once a character has died that they do not come back in this game. Um, so I would just leave it indefinitely at play death action running. What I might do instead though, is bring back this sprite.animationfinished.connect. And then this is gonna be the on animation finished. 
And what we'll do on animation finished is actually remove the actor node. So function on animation finished. Okay, so in animation finished, we want to actually free the actor node. So let's get a reference to the actor as a node. When we before run, we'll get that initial reference. So we can say actor equals, uh, well, it's uh, the actor. But I'm going to actually rename that to be p actor. Okay, specify that that's from the parameter there and there. And we're going to just call actor dot q free. Whenever our death animation finishes, we're going to free the actor from the scene, basically. And then that means that this whole behavior tree is going to cease running because it's part of the actor scene, which is the invader root. So if we hit play now and we shoot a few times, well, you can see after it finishes the animation, we just remove the actor from the scene altogether. And if we check the debugger, the behave, you can see it no longer exists in the scene. Okay, that's probably what we really want for our uh, play death animation.